name is Jordan, also known as Mix. And today I want to show you guys how to create this very dirty base. As you can see, I use a Thor synthesizer and some very distortion techniques. And as you can see, we're only using effects instead of reason. I got a request to do a synth that only does stuff inside of reason. So that way you don't need to buy or get any special deals. So I'm going to show how this dirty synth sounds and then I'll guide you guys how to make this wonderful synth. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to go down to our BPM, our tempo, and change this to 75. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in a combinator and throw in our Thor synth found in instruments. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all the oscillators, then the routing settings, the filters, the amp envelope, and then some of the chorus and delay. So for our first um, oscillator, I'm going to change this to a wavetable. I'm going to bring this down an octave and change the wave type to mixed waves. I'm going to turn it up six semitones. And there is something I forgot to do. So first, we're going to take down the master volume to probably about negative 15. And the second thing we want to do is change our name of Thor to E, Dirty Bass. So the reasons why I wanted to call this E is because six semitones from C is E, the key of E. It's very important to get your keys down first before you start messing with anything because uh, your idea for the synth or the song will uh, you're gonna have unlimited ideas you don't really need to be like oh no I need to get this at this angle it's it's fine you'll you'll be okay once we set it in the key of E so I, I just want to make sure anyways um so the position of this waveform needs to be at 91 sounds very nice and very clean to me so the second the second waveform we're going to work with is a analog and we're going to leave it where it is and i want to throw up the pw to 36. we're going to set the semitone to six boop boop there we go and for our third oscillator we're going to use an analog and we're going to take this down to octave 2, so down, uh, just take it down 2. And for the semitone, turn it up to 6. And I want to change it to a sine wave. The next thing I want to do is turn on all of the oscillators for both filters. And I'm going to change the routing of the soft shaper. I want to make sure that's on and turn up the drive to about 91. I'm going to take the routing. So it takes all of this signal, all of oscillator 1, 2, and 3, and sends it through the filter 1. It goes through the shaper, and the shaper goes back into filter 2. This is feedback distortion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this filter 2 where it is. And for our filter 1, I want to change this to a comb. And let's set the frequency to 224 hertz. And the resonance, I'm going to set this to about 32. And make sure it's positive. And for filter 2, I'm going to make sure it, it gets to be sending out. So we have it where we want it. Next thing I'm going to attack is the amp. So I'm going to turn up the decay a bit more and the attack to about 25. So it glides into our sound a little bit easier. The next thing I'm going to do is widen our sound. 
I can't stress this enough. If you don't have a wide sound in the beginning, or even kind of hollow and mono, uh, you want to get your sound to sound as clean as possible when coming out of the synth. So what I'm going to do is I want to turn on my delay, and I'm going to set the time to about 15.7 milliseconds. I want to take the dry wet down to about, uh, I think, 12 or 13. And what this does, it gives it a little bit of widening effect. The chorus will brighten this up here in a minute. So I want to turn on chorus. And I want to set my delay to about, I think, 0.9 or 1.5 milliseconds. And I want to take the dry wet down as well. So we have a little bit cleaner sound now. So I'm just going to close Thor. And now we get to the fun part. We get to distort our synth. So I'm going to throw on a Scream 4. And the damage we're going to mess with is going to be about 79. So almost to 80, but not quite. The next thing we're going to do is set it to Tube. And we're going to take P1 to 84. And P2, we're going to set that to 50. I'm going to turn on my Cut. And I want to boost the cut low to 15. And I want to take the mid down to negative 13. And the highs down to negative 20. I'm then going to show you what the difference between this damage and undamaged. So it's very gritty, very distorted now. The next thing I'm going to do is widen the sound even further with uh, some shaping techniques. So I'm going to throw on the echo. I want to take the time all the way down. I want to turn off sync. I want to set the offset right to uh, about 16 milliseconds. And we've already created kind of like a 70s um, widening uh, theme. Next, we're going to throw on a RV7000 Advanced Reverb. And I'm going to actually take the dry, the decay, and the high EQ of uh, a preset we're going to use called All Treetops. And we're going to take them down to a minimal scale so that way our impact of our sound won't destroy all of the ambience and all of the highs and lows and everything else that goes into the mix. So the preset we're going to use, all treetops. I want to take the decay down to 12 or 11. The high EQ needs to come down to negative 55. And the dry wet needs to come down to about 12. Next, what we're going to do is throw on a BV512 vocoder. And I want to show you guys some very cool you can do with this little synth. I'm sorry, this effect. So a lot of people like to throw it on four, but I've actually discovered a new technique with this thing. And I'm going to throw it on eight. And I'm going to turn my shift to 32. So I'm going to show you the differences between four and eight. Oh, and I'm sorry, there is one thing I forgot to do. Go back to the screen four. That's okay. I'm going to go to my echo. That's okay. Is in the RV7000. I'm trying to find my audio problem because I can't hear it. Oh, I'm sorry. That's because it's in uh, vocoder mode. You actually want to switch that to equalizer. My bad. So this is the difference between uh, 4 and 8. When you squish it down to four, it you're actually forcing all of the sounds, all the different bands to just go into four uh, EQ. And that's not what the sound is designed to do. It's designed to actually sound wide within your own range. So uh, that's why I like to use eight is because it's a widening technique. It actually allows the synth to breathe a little bit more with some light distortion. So the next thing we're going to do is throw on a unison. 
I'm going to take the detune up to 54 and then dry wet. I'm going to take that down to about 9. I'm going to set the voice count to 4. And the next thing we're going to do is add some subtle distortion. So I'm going to throw on a D11 foldback distortion. I'm going to set the amount to 127. And the foldback, we're going to set that to 2. So if you have some very rich monitors, uh, you'll be able to hear this, but I don't. So uh, it's just kind of an effect when you hear it in the final mix. So the final thing, and the more complex we go into this, we're going to throw on a pulverizer. I'm going to set my squash to 18, and I'm going to set my dirty, my dirtness to 23%. The next thing I'm going to do is set the filter to a low pass plus 12 notch. And the next thing I'm going to do is throw on the frequency of this to 14 from the tremor to the filter, 14% positive. The next thing I want to do is throw up my rate. So I'm actually going to play a few keys while you listen to this, but for now we're going to throw on spread and turn the amount to 17% on the volume so that way we actually hear the distortion. I'm going to set my waveform from a sine to a square. Now for the rate, I'm going to set this to 1.25 kilohertz. So let's listen to how this sounds when we get up there. It gives it a little bit of nice distortion, nice deep harmonics. So the final thing we'll need to do is throw on, uh, for as far as distortion, we're going to throw on Scream 4 again. For the damage, I'm actually going to take this down to 41. And for the type, I'm going to set this to tape. The next thing I'm going to do is throw on my P1 all the way up and my P2 all the way down. I'm going to throw on my body to give it a little bit more voice. I'm going to set my resonance down to about 11. We're going for subtle differences in this. I'm going to set my scale to 27 and I'm going to set my auto to 2. I'm going to set the type to B. And I'm going to show you the differences between the damaged and the undamaged. It's pretty significant. This is actually the tape effect inside of Audiomatic. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. So to wrap this uh, synthesizer up, we're going to throw on a stereo imager. So I'm going to go to my studio effects, stereo imager. I want to set my low band down to negative 27. I want to set the cross frequencies to 1.55 kilohertz. And for the high band, I want to set that to positive 30. So we're actually giving our synth a little bit more distortion. This sounds a little too loud for me, so I want to lower the levels a bit. And I'm going to show you the differences between Stereo Imager because no one does it. And I'm tired of people not doing it. So this is the difference be between with it on and with it off. As you can tell, it gets it a little bit cleaner. The final step we're going to do is throw on a maximizer. I'm going to take it off limiter, put release to auto, turn on soft clip, and set the amount to 127. I'm going to raise the levels again back to negative uh, 1.8 and turn down the input to probably about negative 5.2. And there you guys have it, your very own dirty synth bass. I'll check you guys out later for another tutorial. Thanks for tuning in. If you guys have any more questions or compliments, uh, please let me know down in the description below. I read every single comment you guys give out. 
thanks again and i'll check you guys out later for some uh drum distortion techniques have a good one stay safe and peace